Welcome to 24 Hours Channel, where we bring you the latest political and social news of the day. In today's program, we will present the main highlight as follows. Dear valued audience, a vast region in northern China, including the capital city of Beijing, was put on alert yesterday as Typhoon Dok Suri made landfall and continued its movement across the mainland. Typhoon Dok Suri struck Fujian province in southern China yesterday morning with winds reaching up to 175 km per hour. After making landfall, the typhoon weakened into a tropical depression and continued moving north, as reported by China's meteorological agencies. According to the China National Meteorological Center, Beijing and neighboring provinces are expected to experience heavy rainfall from yesterday to the day after tomorrow, with precipitation potentially equaling or surpassing the 2012 rainstorm that claimed 79 lives in Beijing. Reuters reports that Beijing issued an orange warning, the second highest level in the Fortier system, due to the risk of flooding from the tropical depression. Several parks, lakesides, and riverside roads in the city have been closed as a precaution against the danger, as announced by the city authorities. Hebei province, which borders Beijing and is expected to receive heavy rain and strong winds, has issued the highest level red warning in certain areas. Shandong province along the coast and the city of Tianjin, also located in northern China near Beijing, are also at a high risk of natural disasters. Duxuri is the strongest typhoon to make landfall in Fujian since records began in 1950. It is also the strongest typhoon to hit China this year, according to the South China Morning Post. In the provincial capital Fuzhou of Fujian, residents were ordered to stay indoors unless necessary. At least five cities in Fujian broke records for 24-hour rainfall during the typhoon's landfall. Typhoon Dok Suri triggered landslides and floods, causing at least 13 deaths in the Philippines before heading northwest towards China. China has witnessed severe weather conditions this summer, with record-breaking high temperatures, a situation scientists believe is becoming more serious due to climate change. In early July, Beijing and surrounding areas broke temperature records, with temperatures exceeding 40 degrees Celsius. Super Typhoon Dok Suri made landfall on the mainland of southern China yesterday, bringing heavy rain and strong winds that caused widespread power outages, fires, uprooted trees, and tore apart parts of a stadium roof. Super Typhoon Dok Suri is the strongest typhoon to hit mainland China this year and the second strongest to hit Fujian province since Typhoon Mirandi in 2016. According to Xinyuan News Agency, the super typhoon affected over 724,600 people, including 124,400 who were evacuated, and directly caused an economic loss of up to 50.27 million Chinese yuan approximately 173 million Vietnamese dong. In the port city of Chuanso in Fujian, 39 people were slightly injured due to the storm, and over 500,000 households lost power. The roof of a stadium in the city center of Chuanso was torn off, resulting in shards of glass and metal debris falling everywhere. In the city of Haman, the urban area froze on the day before yesterday when the storm hit, according to Reuters, quoting a resident named Ho Trang. The streets were devoid of vehicles, Factories and shopping centers were all closed, according to this individual. Social media videos showed power lines exploding as the storm swept through Dinjong, a city of about 2 million people. At the time of its mainland landfall in Fujian province, the wind speed of Super Typhoon Dok Suri had decreased to that of a strong tropical storm. However, heavy and prolonged rain is still expected for inland provinces such as Anhui, where crops are grown. The storm's impact is also forecasted to bring heavy rain to the capital city of Beijing today or tomorrow. Before entering mainland China, Super Typhoon Dok Suri had also wreaked havoc from the Philippines to Taiwan. In the Philippines, a ferry sank near Manila, resulting in at least 26 deaths. In total, there were over 36 storm-related fatalities in the Philippines. In southern Taiwan, the storm toppled trees and caused power outages for over 278,000 households. Over 200 domestic and international flights were delayed or cancelled on the previous day. Rail services between southern and eastern Taiwan were suspended due to the storm. Taiwan is currently assessing the extent of the impact. Typhoon Dok Suri brought heavy rain to several areas in northern China, including Beijing, 
after hitting the Philippines and Taiwan before reaching mainland China. Hebei and Shandong provinces in China are also among the regions affected by Typhoon Doksuri, as reported by the Chinese state-run news agency, Xinhua. The Beijing Meteorological Bureau stated that the city would experience torrential rain from last night to the next two days, according to Xinhua. An orange warning for heavy rain was issued throughout the city at around 11.45 am, local time yesterday. However, the warning was upgraded to a red alert for heavy rain later on the same day, expected to last for the next three days. Xinhu added that the Beijing Municipal Water Authority and the Beijing Meteorological Bureau had jointly issued flood warnings for mountainous areas. The city government of Beijing has closed some parks, lakesides, and riverside roads, while also warning of the potential for severe flooding due to heavy rainfall. Over 3,000 people have been evacuated, and around 203,000 rescue personnel have been mobilized to respond to the storm. Heavy rain has also swept through various areas in the eastern part of Shandong province since late yesterday. Due to continuous downpours, the provincial government of Shandong has issued yellow warnings for heavy rain and flood warnings for mountains. Tens of millions of people are potentially affected by Super Typhoon Doksuri's landfall in China since yesterday. Xinhu also reported that across China, several coastal cities such as Hamon, Tianchao, and Chuangchao temporarily closed businesses, factories, and schools since the afternoon of the previous day. Over 400,000 people have been evacuated in Fujian province. Before making landfall in China, Typhoon Doksuri had caused extensive damage in various areas of the Philippines, resulting in at least 39 deaths, including dozens of people on an overloaded boat that capsized in strong winds. The storm also forced hundreds of thousands of people in the country to evacuate. Similar to much of the Northern Hemisphere, China has experienced severe weather this year, grappling with an intense heat wave at the beginning of July. Doksuri is the strongest typhoon to make landfall in Fujian province since records began in 1950. It is also the most powerful typhoon to hit China so far this year. China has just issued a red alert for heavy rain, the highest level of weather warning by color, only the second time in the country's history. The red alert for heavy rain was issued by the China Meteorological Administration at 6 p.m. yesterday. This is the most severe weather warning level among the four-tier color-coded system, which includes red, orange, yellow, and blue. This is also the second red alert for heavy rain in history since the official implementation of the warning mechanism in 2010. The previous occurrence was on September 29, 2011. The China Meteorological Administration predicts that from 8 p.m. yesterday to 8 p.m. Today, several provinces and municipalities including Beijing, Hebei, Tianjin, Shantou, Hanoi, and Shandong will experience heavy to very heavy rainfall with some areas receiving up to 250-400 mm of precipitation. On the same day, the China Flood and Drought Disaster Emergency Response Level 1 was activated due to the serious meteorological hazard of heavy rain. This decision was made based on the assessment that the remnants of Typhoon Doksuri moving northwards will bring prolonged heavy rainfall to many areas, with a broad range of impact and significant cumulative rainfall. According to their forecast, this heavy rain event is notably extreme and poses a high risk of natural disaster. An estimated area of up to 220,000 km squared will accumulate over 100 mm of rain, affecting around 130 million people. The capital city of Beijing also issued a red alert for heavy rain yesterday afternoon, activating an early flood prevention orange alert, the second level, around noon the same day. Additionally, all river and lake traffic, as well as boat docking, was suspended, and all roads leading down to the rivers and lakes were closed. As of yesterday morning, Typhoon Doksuri had affected over 880,000 people in Fujian province, with a direct economic loss of nearly 430 million Chinese yuan on around 60 million US dollars. Rainfall measurements at six observation stations in the province broke records dating back to 1961, with Fudin breaking the daily rainfall record for the entire province. Doksuri has become the strongest typhoon to hit China this year and is the second strongest typhoon to hit Fujian province since meteorological records were kept. The flood control situation there is currently considered grim. A devastating flood is also looming in BAC Zhang and Guangdong. The water level at Index City's peak is around 36 meters, 
more than 10 meters above the warning level. In the urban area of Thanvin, the flood peak is around 23 meters, surpassing the warning level by 4 meters. Local residents report that flood waters have reached the second floor. By 10 p.m. Yesterday, the authorities had raised the flood prevention emergency level to level I. According to official reports from the People's Republic of China, due to recent heavy rainfall, the first flood in the BAC Zhang River Basin this year will escalate into a devastating flood. The second flood in the Tai Zhang River is also approaching, and water levels will continue to rise and remain high for extended period. At 10 p.m. yesterday, the Chaozhong Flood Control Headquarters upgraded its emergency response level from Level 2 to Level I. According to the report, the peak water level of the flood reached around 36.10 meters in Endex City yesterday, exceeding the warning level by 10. 10 meters. The mainstream of the BAC Zhang River, including Kuang Nguyen Than Than District and Feng Than Town, is expected to reach a peak water level of around 16 meters at around 10 p.m. Yesterday, surpassing the warning level by 4.0 meters. Local residents attribute the significant flooding in BAC Zhang and Enoch primarily to the release of water from multiple reservoirs in the upper reaches of the Thuquan area. They also believe that if Enoch were to open its floodgates, Kuangchao would not survive, so Endic must bear the burden alone. However, Endic is a small district, and most of its residents are elderly or children. How can we withstand this? Flood waters have already reached the second floor. Reportedly, according to the Ministry of Water Resources, due to the impact of heavy rainfall, 10 rivers, including the Hutu River A branch of the Yuanjiang River and Trinkan, the Yuan West River, the Kam West River, the Aping River, the Mar River, and the Huduong River branches of the Sakantingho River in Katlam, the Along River and the Daseli River in the lower reaches of the Ingojong River, the True Jiak River A branch of the Qingshou River in Sichuan, and the Baling River A branch of the Beibu Gulf in Kuaichao, have experienced flooding above the warning levels, ranging from 0.5 to 2.23 meters. By 8 a.m. On Thursday, the water level at the Fukdin section of the Upper Yuha River and the Downam to Haidi Miao section of the Lower Dao River still exceeded the warning thresholds by 0. 0 meters. The Ministry of Water Resources predicts that due to the impact of heavy rainfall, flooding will occur in the Sich Tu River in Kwai Chau, the Jiling River, the Ingo Zhong River, and the Kwai Zhong River in Trinkan, with small and medium-sized rivers in heavily affected areas such as Kwai Zhong, Duong Ho, and Litay and Trincam potentially facing super warning level floods. This concludes today's news bulletin. For any contributions or information, please leave a comment below. If you found this informative, please give us a like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for your attention, and we look forward to meeting you again. The recent information concludes today's new Bulletin of 22 Hours channel. Thank you all for your interest and viewership. Please leave your feedback in the comment section of this video so that our team can respond promptly. Goodbye and see you again.